Hi guys, it's Denise with my Scrappy Place and welcome back for card number three in my Rooted in Nature series. Um, I have made a couple of cards already using the Rooted in Nature stamp set and to, this one is very similar to one that I made earlier in a video. Here is the one that I made earlier. And you can see that it's got several layers to it, lots of cutting, um, some punching. This would be what I would consider one of my more fancy cards. Um, this one opens up like this. I need to put a piece of white in the middle before I send it to whoever it's going to go to. But this card is similar in nature, um, but a little less labor intensive. And I didn't use the Stamparatus on it like I did for this other one. For the other card, is, if you saw the video, you'll remember that I brought out the Stamparatus and I used this template and I basically moved the paper around in different locations using my Stamparatus and then stamped the leaves, or in this case, the poinsettia flowers using the template and the Stamparatus, but I wanted to show you that you could do this card. You could even do the other card that I made. Um, if you didn't have the Stamparatus, you could still do it, and I wanted to show you how I did that. So again, I'm using the Rooted in Nature set, which is two pieces. It's 16 different stamps within the two pieces. It's two different cases. They come like this. Um, these are the Red Rubber stamps, so they've got the red rubber with the foam thick mounting. I don't know if you can see. And you stick them to a block or your Stamparatus. But like I said, it complements our Lovely as a Tree stamp set, which from what I understand has been in the catalog probably forever. Um, I know it's been in there since I became a demonstrator a few years ago. So I don't know exactly how it is, but this stamp set was brought out to kind of complement it. You can see it's got big trees, it's got Christmas type trees, it's got another fir tree, it's got leaves in here, leafy branches, um, some nice sayings to thank you for all you do, words are never enough, um, be strong, be happy, be you, you're wonderful thinking of you. This is like a, a slice of a tree so you can see all the different rings. I haven't made anything with this yet. Um, another couple set of leaves as well. It also comes with where you can purchase the uh, Nature's Roots Framelits, which cuts out a lot of the different shapes. The only thing I don't think it cuts out is obviously it doesn't cut out the words and there's not one for this big tree ring, but it's, I mean, it's a pretty simple cut if you were just using your scissors, but pretty much everything else, let's see how many framelits are in this particular there's 12 different framelits in this particular package. This is not exactly how they come. I put mine on a magnet board so it's easier uh, for me not to lose them, but they do come in this um, sleeve like this. So. so there's 12 different ones. You can, If you buy the stamp set and the framelits, you can get a discount for like 10% cheaper than if you were to buy them separately at different times. You don't absolutely have to do that thing in there sideways so it wouldn't shut but that is a different option and I will put the link to my online online store below and the all the products that I use I'll list them out in my blog which will also have a link at the bottom so I'm going to use this stamp for the poinsettia like I said I'm using the leaves something that you might not necessarily think of using these for but I'm going to make the poinsettia leaves and the saying comes from this stamp set, the Warm Hearted Stamp Set. And the only way that you can get this particular stamp set is if you are, if you host a, um, a workshop. This is in our holiday catalog. And you can see that it's for host only, hostess only. And you can see the different stamps that come within this particular set. We are going to be using the Merry Christmas, but it's got a thanks. That would be nice for... Thanksgiving or just a thanks in general card. Here's cheers to the new year. Um, it's got boo, it's got a skeleton, some snowflakes and different flowers and just it's a really cool stamp set. But like I said, the only way that you can get it is if you host a workshop through Stampin' Up. So that is 
that's the story on this one. So, and these are photopolymers, so we're going to use the Merry Christmas for our sentiment. And then some leaves that are in the uh, Rooted in Nature as well. Our card is going to be just a little bit different than I make here in a minute, but let's go ahead and get started. So, first thing that I'm going to need, uh, the color combinations that we're using, let me zoom in a little bit, are Early Espresso, Cherry Cobbler, and Mossy Meadow. And you'll, the first thing you might say, well, the, your stamp set, your, your stamp pads look a little differently. Yes, the stamp pads look a little different. These were our previous uh, models, I guess you would say, versions of our stamp pads. Uh, when the new catalog came out in June, they redesigned our stamp pads to, uh, to this. And I just, I haven't replaced all my stamp sets. I'm kind of of the... The theory, if it's not broken, don't don't worry about it. So these work just fine until they get too old and they don't work well. I'm just going to keep on using them. But that's why the stamp has looked a little bit different. So that's the only difference. All right, for this particular card, we are going to use a Cherry Cobbler card base. And again, this is eight and a half by five and a half. Scored at four and a quarter to make our card. We have got a piece of very vanilla cardstock, and this is cut at four by five and a quarter. Um, my layering frame now on this one, I used the mossy meadow green, but I decided to go ahead and use the cherry cobbler. So this one is, I think this is three and a half. Let's see. Yep, yeah, this is a three and a half inch square. So three and a half, three and a half. And then another layering piece. This is the one that we're actually be doing the stamping on. This is three and a quarter and by three and a quarter square. Like I said, we're not going to use the Stamparatus for this. I'm going to show you that even though you may not have a Stamparatus, you can still make this design. It just takes a little bit more, um, just takes a little bit more work, I guess you could say. You just have to be a little bit more careful. All right, so I basically have taken my stamp set and I mounted it on a clear block. And this I showed you earlier on the, on the stamp. It's got a kind of a more of a pointy end and a rounder end. This is like the end of the leaf and then this is like the stem end. We want to make sure that the stem end is in the center of our paper. So I'm just going to ink this up and I'm going to adjust my camera just a little bit so it's going to shake so that I'm not having to lean quite so far in. There we go. I'm gonna ink that up, and if my head is in the, gets in the camera, I'm, I'm very sorry, but I've got to get in here to where I can see what I'm doing. But basically, I wanna get it as close to the edge as I can, and I want it to be as centered as possible, and go straight down. I think I may have gone too far, but we'll see. Then I'm just going to turn it and I'm going to line it up again and I'm going to stamp so that they're straight across from one another. Does that make sense? Then I'm going to turn my paper and I'm just going to keep doing this until now here it's going to look like kind of like a cross. So there's that. Doesn't quite look like a poinsettia but we're getting there. So then I'm just going to take it and line it up again like that and like that got a little off but that's okay you really can't tell flowers in nature aren't perfect so your stamping probably isn't going to be either and that's fine and we'll do that one right there so that looks pretty good pretty pretty good all right we'll set that aside and put that aside so I don't get inked on myself there. So there is our poinsettia, okay? Easy peasy, and you didn't have to have a Stamparatus. Now, if you were gonna be making lots and lots and lots of these, I probably would go with the Stamparatus, but if you're just gonna make one or two, you know, you, you don't have to have it. You can do it this way. All right, let's put that aside. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a piece of scrap paper, and I'm going to take my very vanilla and I'm going to take my mossy meadow and I'm going to find the leaf that I had pulled out of the stamp set earlier which here it is and I just mounted it 
on a clear block again as well. And I don't want to do this full strength ink. I want to do second, what we call second generation stamping. So let me show you off to the side here what full strength is going to look like. It's going to be pretty dark. And that's very pretty, but I want it to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to ink up. I'm going to stamp and then you'll see what it looks like when I stamp it off and how it's a little bit lighter and it's just a little more subtle so that is what I'm going to do and the reason why I have my paper here is so that I don't get it on my table so I'm going to stamp off the first one and then I'm going to stamp off the edge and you see it kind of went off the edge of this paper and that's what I want it to do so stamp off and stamp second generation stamp off and I'm kind of turning the stamp a little bit each time so it's just not quite so oh, I get a little bit of a random stamp in there so that I've got a nice border on the edge of my paper like that okay so close that up so this is a really easy card it's still very pretty it's just not as frou frou and layered and quite as fancy as the other one. Uh, next, I'm going to take my early espresso ink and I'm going to stamp the saying on the bottom here. And what I'm going to do first, I think, and let's move this out of the way, is I'm going to go ahead and layer my stamped piece onto my other square. And just take some liquid glue. I'm almost out but you know I've got a bazillion of these but I'm kind of cheap and I'm <laughs> I want to use the very I want to get to the very last drop that's just how I am cheap frugal whatever you want to call it and let's layer this up the thing I like about wet glue as opposed to a tape runner is it gives me a little bit of time that if I don't get it quite straight, I can wiggle it around. Um, we have a very nice snail adhesive that's a tape runner type you might be familiar with. Um, but I also, I, like I've mentioned in a, several of my other videos, I live in a kind of a humid climate. And after a while, the snail just doesn't hold, keep holding. Things will kind of fall apart. That's not the case with everybody, but where I live, I have found that to be, to be what happened. Um, then, okay, back to this. Now, let's take this, and we're just going to lay it on here for right now so we can get a basic idea of where this is going to go so that we know where to stamp our Merry Christmas. And I'm going to get my scrap paper back over here, and I'm going to ink my stamp up in early espresso, and I'm just going to experiment stamp over here because I haven't really used the stamp set a whole lot and I just want to make sure that it's yeah that looks good okay nice thing about the clear photopolymers is you can see exactly where you're going to go so we're going to put this right about here hopefully that is straight looks pretty straight to me okay put that ink up move that stamp set out of the way so I don't get it on myself and let that dry just a little bit let me get another let me get some more glue here and I'm going to take and flip this over and put some glue on the back of that let's put it on our card base again kind of centering it up in the wet glue except if I don't get it right the first time it gives me a, a little bit of a chance to to get it right I'm gonna flip this over because I've kind of got ink on my hands and just give it a press on the back side okay, I'm shaking here just to make sure it's down good so I don't smudge. I've been stamping all day and I've got other colors on my fingers and I just don't want to take the chance. All right, so to make this just a little more frou frou -y, even though it is fairly simple, I'm gonna take our Clear Wink of Stella, which is 
it's like a shimmery kind of, it's not really a paint and it's not really an ink, but it has a, a real, a brush tip on it. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint my poinsettia. And what's going to happen is the ink is water-based. So it's going to move the ink around a little bit. So it's going to seem like I'm coloring it, but I'm really not. It's just that ink moving around, just kind of try and stay in the lines, but it's putting a really pretty shimmer to it. Um, I like sparkly things that's just kind of how I am I like my cards to have a little bit of sparkle either with bling which this is going to have bling in it too but especially for Christmas cards I like whenever I was actually buying Christmas cards before I got into stamping up and I started making my own cards I always when I bought Christmas cards at the store I always went for the ones that had glitter on them. They were a little bit more expensive, but they were a little bit more fancy, but I always got glittery cards. So anybody that ever got a card from me knows that I always went for the glitter cards. So, and that's still the case today. When my Christmas cards out, 99% of the time, they're gonna have some kind of sparkle on them. And speaking of Christmas, I know we're still in October, but it's getting to be that time of year where if you make your Christmas cards, and you want them to go out in the first part of December, you better start thinking about making cards here pretty soon. Like I said, this particular stamp set isn't a Christmas set, but you can certainly, as you see, make Christmas cards with it. It's in our annual catalog off the top of my head. I don't remember what page it's on, but it is in there, I promise. And like I said, I got to looking at it and thought, how can I do something different and make a Christmas card using leaves and trees and this is kind of what I came up with all right so I want to pop this up so I'm going to take some of my dimensionals here and flip that over I don't know if you can see I'll flip it back over and see if you can see the the spark the sparkly can you see how it's let me get it really close can you see the shimmer in it as opposed to here's one that I did with different colors that doesn't have any shimmer on it. It, it kind of looks shimmery, but it, it really doesn't. And it moved it around to where it kind of looks more like it's it's painted in pink rather than um, anyway. So there we go. All right, so I put dimensionals on the back of it. We're almost done here. Let's see, flip this over. It doesn't really have a wrong way or a right way. And stick that on there. And again, it needs something in the middle. So I am going to get our gold faceted gems and I'm going to get my pokey tool and get one of these off and stick that right in the middle. And there we go, a very simple card. Um, I kind of like it with the red background, but I mean, I like the green too. Um, I don't know if you have to just tell me which one you like the best. I like them both, but uh, pretty simple. Like I said, you don't have to have a Stamparatus to make this poinsettia. Again, you can do a very simple one, uh, just using your eyeball, eyeball it. Um, so yeah, there we go. Nice quick Christmas card, you could do that in any kind of colors. You don't have to do the red colors. You could do them in blue or silver. You could do them in pink. Um, probably even do it in a, oh, the crumb cake kind of looks goldish, but there we go. Two different Christmas cards, two cards, a little bit different. One with the mossy meadow green around the outside. And here's the one with the cherry cobbler. So again, thanks so much for coming and stopping by. And we'll talk to you again soon. See you later. Bye-bye.